Hello, welcome to the project of uh, handwritten digits recognition using deep learning with Python and Keras. So we have <coughs> already set up our environment. So you can use uh, refer the tutorial about setting up Anaconda, Keras and all set up and here we look at our first example so this is regarded as the hello world program in deep learning and we'll try to recognize handwritten digits using deep learning so first we have I have already set up the code so import tensorflow as tf so it's a deep so with the hash we have the comment deep learning library tensors are just multidimensional arrays so m means is the data set tf.keras so here we are using the data set from keras so if you want you can use your own data set but you have to replace it here so means is a data set of 22 by 28 28 by 28 images of handwritten digits and their labels and just like uh, <coughs> the normal examples we have x train y train x test and y test and we load our data set means dot with the load function load underscore data so it unpacks the images to x train x test and labels to y train y test And next what you have to do is we have to normalize so you can see we have to scale it using 0 and 1 so we have the function with uh, keras so we use that utility tf.keras.utils.normalize x train and x is equals 1 and next test we normalize here so next we have to decide our model we are using the sequential model the sequential model is what what you are going to use most of the time it just means that things are going to go in direct order it's like a feed forward model no backwards so we have sequential model and we need to so if we look at our images so those images are like flat images not multi-dimensional so we use the flattened function of keras as well Next we look at the layers first layer with 128 units so this layer has 128 units so we can so dense dense is like uh, like a lego that you put one layer on top of other and like a lego you have the neural network one layer on top of another so the first layer this layer has 128 units the activation function is relu so it's sort of like the default activation function reactive linear unit and currently relu is the activation function you should just default to so it's just used like the default there are many more te to test for sure but if you don't want to use so use relu as a start if you know if you are using it as the basic one you can use relu which is a go to go to re activation function the default one and next we would have model dot add tf dot keras dot layers dot dense 128 activation equals tf dot relu 
so we have another hidden layer and next we have our final layer so final layer we have 10 nodes so we have to use it carefully because one node per possible number prediction for example we have numbers 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so we have 10 predictions and it has to have 10 nodes so this is our final layer we have 10 nodes so in this layer our activation function is a softmax function so it is softmax so since we are we are looking for something like a probability distribution so I have added the comment so option this is the we are passing features through this so we are expecting something like a we are looking for something like a probability distribution so we have our activation function as softmax so we add our layer final layer model dot add t of dot keras dot layers dot dense so it has 10 nodes activation function tf dot in n dot softmax 10 units for 10 classes softmax soft max for probability distribution and next we'll have the loss function so we add it like this model dot compiled optimizer dot adam we are using uh, Adam as the optimize and for the loss function and matrix accuracy. Next we have model dot fit x dot train y train and we have three epochs train to train the model. So to understand these keywords you can uh, watch our previous example which it has uh, a basic uh, neural network deep, deep neural network what is an epoch what is model dot fit what is happening in those things so you can watch that <coughs> and here we look at the loss so neural network we don't here with the function what we try to do is we are not looking at uh, trying to calculate uh, the accuracy and improve improve, uh, in, improve the accuracy but what we are trying to do is to uh, minimize the loss so what we are trying to do is to minimize the loss in deep neural networks so we have validation loss and accuracy model dot evaluate x test and y test so evaluate out the sample data with model and we print the loss and the accuracy and next we save the model and also we can retrieve the model by the load model and next we do predictions new model dot predict x test and print predictions so if we try this you can see the box So in one echo, epoch, the neural network trains, it goes through the full data set and in another epoch, it goes through the same data set again for another time. So you can see it takes time to lower, train the neural network, deep neural network. Now you can see the loss and the accuracy are printed. So the accuracy is 96%, almost 97.
so here we will try to print that test zero value so that is seven and now you can see The image is also 7 and we predicted 7. So we have the image 7 and we predicted 7. So if we take these two separately, <coughs> prediction 0. So prediction 0 is number 7. Let's see what is this number 7. That is test 0. So prediction 0. For 0 index it says it's a 7. Our prediction says it's a 7. We'll print the image and see what is it really is. So we have test 0, x test 0. So we got the answer as 7. Let's see what is it. If you look at the image, it's also 7. So we have successfully trained our deep neural network to recognize hand digit, hand digits, handwritten digits. So the handwritten digit is available here in the image and our system recognized it as 7. So you can see it here. That's the end of this demonstration. Thank you.